Yo, what is going on you guys? It's Andrew back with another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Jordan 4 in military blue. Let's get right into it. Now some of you may be wondering, isn't the name Industrial Blue? And I'm going to get into that in just a few minutes. Now this is the first time since 2012 that the Air Jordan 4 has come back to us in the military blue styling. And since 1989, this is the first time that the shoe looks as close to the original as possible. Getting right into the box, you've got the classic Air Jordan 4 box. You have got the standard Jumpman logo on the top, and Nike Air on the sides, and the cement pattern all around the bottom half of the box. Opening it up, the lid is removable. You got the same cement patterning on the paper on the inside. And you're here for the shoes, not the box. So let's get right into that. Now the left shoe, when you take it out of the box, will include this Nike Air tag, uh, which is attached by one of those little plastic pieces. You can just remove that. If you wear the Nike Air tag on the shoe, you look like an idiot. Now, like I mentioned, this is the first time since 2012 that the military blue colorway has come back to us. You've got that military blue on the midsoles, as well as the eyelets underneath the netting on the logo, the inner lining, and the back heel tab. And like I said, this is the first time that the shoe looks as close to the original 1989 release as possible, which includes that Nike Air tag on the heel and the Nike logo on the bottom. The shoe itself has a mid-cut height, so you got a little bit of cushioning on the inner lining, which feels a little bit softer than the last couple of retro uh, Jordan 4s that I've seen. White leather covers the majority of the uppers with a little bit of short-haired nubuck or suede, I want to say. This is like nubuck. It doesn't feel like suede. But a little bit of nubuck along the toe box, sitting on top a rubber outsole. That rubber outsole does have the star imprints on the toe, as well as that herringbone pattern throughout. And again, like I said, that Nike Air logo on the inside. You have white netting over a blue mesh fabric, as well as that Jordan logo on the tongue. And on the inside, of the, when you flip the tongue forward, you can see it says Air Jordan. I guess in the past, players would sometimes fold the tongue down. So when you would flip that tongue towards the front of the shoe, it would say Air Jordan. So when you're looking at it from the back of the shoe, it's upside down. Now, a couple of things that I like about this release as opposed to some other Jordan 4 releases is the material choices, specifically in the heel tab and the wings. Uh, in the past, these wings have been pretty stiff as well as that heel tab. And a problem I would have when I would wear them is that the heel tab would sometimes scrape against the back of your heel, which wasn't very comfortable. This one feels a lot more flimsy, like it's not going to crack anytime soon. Although I will say if you're folding it back, it may, you know, start to droop a little bit, but I don't really see that being a problem for most people. And the wings are a bit flimsier as well. I won't, I don't think flimsy is the right word. I think more like malleable is the right word. Like they're definitely softer. They're not as stiff as the old Jordan 4 wings would be. Another thing I like about this version is the shape of the toe box. So with past Air Jordan 4s, you'd kind of get a boxier end at the uh, front of the shoe. This one has more of a pointed toe, which... I've mentioned before on this channel, a pointed toe on an original styling shoe makes it look 10 times better. I think that personally, they've really lost a lot of the original Jordan 4 design with the boxiness of the front of that toe box. And I think this one kind of amends that a bit. Now, this is not the first time I've owned a pair of Military Blue 4s. I actually had the last release, the 2012s, um, but those have been beat to shit, destroyed. Um, I don't have them anymore, I will say that. Another thing I want to point out with Jordan 4s is oftentimes what you'll see is a cracking along the midsole uh, paint, which is a result of the pressure put onto the polyurethane foam midsole here. To, to put it lightly, there's a layer of paint over the foam. The foam moves, paint does not, so paint will eventually crack if you wear these enough. That being said, if you really enjoy the shoe, if you really love this colorway, like I really love this colorway, it's not going to be a big deal. You're going to wear them. It doesn't have to look pretty all the time. Now, what's funny about the Military Blue Jordan 4s is I'm noticing a lot of conversation on the internet saying that the Jordan 4 Military Blue was the redheaded stepchild of the original Jordan 4 colorways. So if you guys recall, the white cement, black cement, fire red, and military blue were the original four Jordan 4 colorways that came out in 1989, and these came out around the All-Star game. Th these actually don't match at all with the Bulls uniforms, but what I like about the Military Blue Jordan, it kind of crosses that line between basketball sneaker and lifestyle sneaker, and I think the Jordan 4, along with some of the earlier models, have really done a great job of crossing over into that lifestyle variety. This is no exception, and I think that this shoe looks fantastic in hand. The leather is a little bit glossy in person. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but feeling the leather, I feel like it would, you know, bend nicely and kind of conform over time. You may get some ugly crease. That's just something you gotta charge to the game when you're wearing shoes with this glossy, smooth leather. That being said though, uh, this is actually the only pair of Jordan 4s I have in the collection currently. The one problem I had with Jordan 4s, specifically with the black and red 2019 release, was that the inside of the toe box right here would pinch the hell out of my pinky toes. And it was just so uncomfortable to wear that shoe over time. Now, I haven't worn these yet, 
but what I've read about them online is that they are much more comfortable than previous Jordan 4 releases. However, they are not going to be the same construction as the Nike SB Jordan 4 in the pine green colorway that we saw just last year. That shoe, I was not able to get my hands on. They're very expensive in the aftermarket, and I just don't feel like it's a shoe that I really need. These, for me, in terms of colorway, are a close second to the pine green Jordan 4s. Would I have liked to see them with the same construction in the military blue colorway? Absolutely, I would. That being said, though, I'm not going to split hairs here. It's a, it's a Jordan 4. It's not going to be the most comfortable shoe in the world, but if it's a bit more comfortable than the last Jordan 4, I'll be very happy. Getting into one thing I did not like about this release, um, the name Industrial Blue. So for context, I actually picked these up on the sneakers shock drop a little bit earlier this month. This is currently the end of April. April 25th is when I'm recording this video. So these come out May 4th. Uh, the name of the shoe on the sneakers app and, and most of Nike's branding is Industrial Blue. I don't understand that. And the reason I don't understand that is because you're kind of shying away from the history of the sneaker. This has always been known as the Military Blue Jordan 4. There wasn't really a whole lot of other detail that was required. I don't specifically know what the Military Blue aspect comes from. Like where does that name originate from? I don't really know. But that's what the original name was. And what really irritates me is that on the box, when you look at the color code, it literally says off-white, military blue. Somebody explain that to me. That being said, guys, I believe these retailed at around $215. If you can get them for retail, I highly recommend it. I feel like these will sell out. I feel like a lot of people are really interested in getting their hands on a pair of these. And um, I don't like to see people pay over retail for anything. I personally hate paying over retail for any pair of shoes that I want. If I can get them under retail, I'll gladly buy them. But if I can't, then I probably won't buy them. That being said, I was happy to get these for retail price. I'm happy to have these back in the collection. These, these are honestly one of my favorite Jordans to have ever come out. Right up there with the Chicago Jordan 1, the White Cement Jordan 3, Black Cement Jordan 3, Black and Red Jordan 4, which, like I said, extremely uncomfortable. Can't really wear them anymore. These are definitely up there with like my top five Jordans to have ever come out. So I'm really happy that they decided to bring these back for the 35th anniversary, and I'm really happy that I got them for retail. That being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video here. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, comment down below what you thought, and subscribe for more videos. Until next time, this is Andrew signing out. Peace.